Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with another episode of our Jurassic Rim World Let's Play, uh, where last time around we went on a little adventure, but now everybody is back, and so we will continue working on the base. The administration building that we're looking at here has made some uh, pretty significant progress, so I'm hoping we can continue that today, um, and maybe get the exterior structure at least finished. And I've gone ahead because construction has slowed down a little bit due to lack of concrete. Uh, I've gone ahead and queued up the construction of the floors over here on our barracks building, which has changed a little bit in terms of internal layout. Um, but I figured if we couldn't get the walls going over here because we didn't have concrete, or at least the concrete wasn't coming out fast enough to do it quickly, uh, they could at least start flooring this off so that... Um, we don't have to worry about necessarily going and cutting down the plants and everything, though. That is something I should probably do, is ask them to... Um, by them, I mean, like, you know, the people that are good at cutting down plants. Uh, ask them to come on in here and clear this. Because that will be much faster than having the builders do it. So, something like that. <clears throat> we'll get that all cleared away. And... I did mention that I changed a little bit. I, I didn't change so much as just add uh, these additional rooms here. And uh, the doorway to this room is now just at the bottom here. This is completely walled off. Uh, this is obviously an entire room on its own, which uh, has a door here. This is mirrored over the same on that side, which is accessible from this path there. And uh, I've put a little, um, it's actually white check carpet, and I may change that, but it's supposed to look like um, just some basic, you know, tile or um, maybe like fake tile flooring, like the, what is it, linoleum or whatever. Anyways, there's going to be a little bit of an eating space right there. I'll just put like a table and some chairs. Um, and I think this is going to be their crafting area, so we're going to put these benches in here. Um, and then, of course, this is going to be the bathroom, and we have lots and lots of bedrooms. This space kind of worked out a little bit awkwardly. Um, I could potentially fit another bedroom between this one and this door here. The issue is that this room would be inaccessible unless um, they were moving through a different room, either this one or the one to the right. So I figured... I would just leave it open and maybe we'll have more like seating lounge area type stuff and if we decide to go a different direction with it we can always adjust that later so let's get things rolling uh, we do have some merchants here I've already talked to them and uh, I bought a little bit of medicine off of them but otherwise they didn't really have anything besides animals so we're not gonna bother uh, beyond what I've already grabbed and we've already received another quest. This one is a bandit camp quest. And they want me to take on 12 enemies in return for an Arcotech leg. We'll do this, uh, but probably not today. Maybe we'll set up for it and send them off next episode, or we can try to do the whole thing next episode. But I figure it'd be nice to have these guys hang out at base for a little while and try to get some... Uh, work done rather than sending them immediately back out after they have just returned So how are things going you're bringing steel is anybody making what am I doing up here? Is anybody making concrete? She is probably crafting Well, it's gonna be one of these two Where's the concrete one I think it's this Yeah so I have nine right now, and somebody just took the last nine of them. We need that to be the main focus. So as soon as she's done here, I may suspend those bills and just try to get them to kind of go over there and work on that. Because again, that's kind of the priority right now. Beyond that, um, I was asking them to make some ornate pot, uh, plant pots. I don't know if they've made much progress on that. I don't recall what the original number was. Um, it's 18 now. It was probably like 20 before. But with this giant catch-all warehouse, it's very difficult to find anything. 
So if it ended up in here, I'm trying to get this to pan down. Come on, pan down. There we go. Uh, there's one. But uh, there should be a second one somewhere. Uh, I don't really see it. I see these log stools right here. Uh, that might be it. Well, oh, there's one. Okay. Let's read what the artwork is on these, and then I will um, install them. The question is where? I think we were doing them in... All of these rooms have them. Oh, that one doesn't. Okay, well, that one's going to get one. And this one is about Tetsuo, or made by Tetsuo, anyways. Uh, on this carving is... First of all, it's called Quietude by Blevins. On this carving is an illustration of Penny Blevins murdering a wild boar with an RFB DMR in a cowardly, half-hearted way. To Ibis, is that supposed to be like the plural of Ibex, maybe? Or I, I don't know what that is. Uh, look on. The illustration relates to Blevins eliminating the wild boar at extreme distance on the 4th of September, 5504. So probably during one of the raids... Um, when, you know, the raiders shot at our boars before they made it back inside. Anyway, we'll install that right here. And I needed another one. Well, I needed several. I just need to figure out where they're going to go. So this bathroom has as many as it will need. Um, these guys don't have the good ones. They just have the regular ones. But that's all right. It's not that big a deal. These are public restrooms after all. You can only expect so much. Um, that one's good, too. Uh, these bedrooms could probably use them. In fact, uh, that one has one, so should probably grab this one and add it on over there. So let's ask that that be installed. Where the hell was I? Down here. And then the next ones can go there and there. Uh, we'll get some in these bedrooms, too. Probably not going to do the fancy ones for the prisoners, um, but I will put like a plant pot in there just to make their rooms a little bit nicer. Um, and then we'll need them for all of these bedrooms, obviously, as well as all of these. Right, let's look at the artwork on this one. Eloquence of Riker. This piece bears a portrayal of Alex Riker leaping away from a collapse of debris which impacts with incredible force. He is scratched and bleeding. Uh, this portrayal tells the story of Riker nearly crushed by falling objects on the 1st of December. Um... I don't recall that either. That happened apparently fairly recently. It must have been when we were tearing out... I'm trying to think of like what roof we would have been taking down. Maybe something over here? I think we did have... Yeah, we had like a storage thing here. So maybe he almost got squashed tearing that down. Or it could have been when we were mining out... Was that here? There was like a big mountain that we mined out. Maybe he almost got crushed by a cave-in or something. I mean, he obviously survived. But, uh, that's a, yeah, interesting close call there. I almost want that to be in Riker's room. I don't know where Riker's room would be, though. So, you know what? Cancel that. And let's grab this. So, Riker will be living in this building somewhere. Question is, where? I think, if he's going to be sort of like our head of security, he should have one of the more prominent rooms by the doors. So, you know what? That kind of gives me an idea. Let's make this his bedroom. And I will add a little bit of a room before the doorway here. But it'll be sort of his office. That way, he doesn't have to walk through somebody else's bedroom to get out. But we can make this space a little bit more um, purposeful. And a little bit more roleplay friendly. So, I don't know where we're going to put this. We'll probably have his bed here. And... I don't know... Like, if we do a bed there, the table and chairs can kind of go anywhere. I guess it would probably be 
do I have any rooms laid out like that that I can emulate like this, right? Yeah, so it would be right about here. Okay, good enough for now. By the way, we've been a little bit hard pressed for food. Um, not because there's like a shortage of it, we're just not processing it fast enough. So we have a lot of corn up here and it's not gonna expire for a while even though it is sitting outside. But we've only just recently harvested that and for whatever reason, they weren't too keen on butchering. So I've gone through all the bills and made sure that yes, we can in fact make simple meals out of meat. Uh, but you can see that they really haven't butchered anything. There's no meat in here to cook with. Oh, that would explain that. Checked all the bills here, but I forgot to do that one. But yeah, so they weren't butchering food. They weren't really making any. I think she's been running off to grab corn. Uh, nobody's been actually hauling it, which is a little bit frustrating. And let's see, Amanda, as soon as you're done with that, I'm going to suspend this. So that should mean that there are very few open... Um, I don't think we need glass for... Like, you guys are all steel, right? Yeah. Okay, so we shouldn't need any glass for a little while. I just want them focusing on concrete, because I really want this building to get done. And it looks like it slowly is. I just would prefer it go a little bit faster. Okay, so this is getting furnished. Um, now that they've put in that chandelier, I can put the bed down. It won't actually let me stack up both blueprints, so I had to wait. But we'll get that in there. And we need to get some plumbing up here as well. So let's jump over to hygiene. We'll do our steel plumbing. And where's the closest route? It's probably going to be from here. Normally I like to have several paths for redundancy's sake. That way if anything does go wrong, um, you know, the water can root through a different pathway. But uh, in this case, plumbing takes a long time to build. So I think I would rather just make it as short as possible. We're gonna run it like this. And later on we can, you know, maybe run plumbing through all the walls or something like that and have each building interconnected with all the others. But since this is already here, I'm just gonna branch it off, <clears throat> excuse me, and we will worry about expanding that later. You know, it's unfortunate that Amanda is, well, it's it doesn't really matter anymore anyways because she has a natural leg, but for a while she had a peg leg. And she is a body purist, so she hated having a prosthetic, regardless of the quality. But she would have been a great candidate for this um, Arcotech leg. But obviously we grew her a new one in the vat up here, so she doesn't need one anymore, but... She could have been even better than before if we had, you know, been able to get her that. Cool, so they are getting all that stuff cut down. Virgil appears to be hauling wood to build some furniture. Okay, fair enough. As you can see, I've already moved Virgil and Ayala and then Gomez and Eduard into these bedrooms just to free up some more hotel space. And as soon as these bedrooms become more viable, we will um, continue doing that. But obviously, we're you know kind of not there yet. As far as power goes, um, let's get some conduits. I can't run them there because of the plumbing. That's a bit unfortunate. Um, we we'll have to wait until they build that plumbing. Or no, apparently I already have the blueprint there. Okay. Never mind. So I already did it. It's just not been built yet. Um, let's reconnect these so that they're a little bit closer. So our friends from Bonfarston are finally leaving. Again, they didn't have much. Uh, I bought a bit of medicine off of them. And I think I gave them a bit of beer as a gift. That was about it. Speaking of beer, why are you drinking beer in... Woody's bedroom of all places like 
he picked it up here and yet felt the need to, I guess, bring it with him all day and then drink it in somebody else's uh, living quarters, which is a bit odd, but sure. Fair enough. Um, I wish, like, what are you up to right now? You're going to go build a wooden nightstand. Amanda, what are you doing? You're going to go play video games. I'm trying to find somebody that's not particularly busy. You're going to go watch a prisoner. You know what would be more useful to me is if somebody could haul all this damn corn. Or at least a good amount of it. Ah, uh, crap. Well, I would have preferred she just focus on the corn. I'm not too worried about this cloth, but I guess... Um... As long as she gets some of it. I, I would just like to get it inside so it stops deteriorating. And also, if we can get it stockpiled near our cooking area, we can go back to making um, fine meals rather than simple ones. But I don't want to slow down the cooking process by forcing her to get, you know, five meat from here and then walking all the way up here to get five corn. It looks like this corn is uh, going to be ready to harvest relatively soon as well. And then we do have food growing out here. Um, we have the rice. This is all heal root. Do we really need two of those? I guess we'll see. And then this was going to be Devil Strand again. Which we're not using a ton of, but it would be nice to be able to replenish. It honestly feels like we might need to grow more food. Uh, I don't recall if we have food growing anywhere else. I don't think that we do. That reminds me, though. Um, did this get replanted? It kind of looks like it did. But I definitely asked them not to. Uh, it's not growing at all. That's night. Yeah, never mind. Um, in, in the morning, it should be like 200%. I guess we'll just wait until it's done, and then I'll ask them to harvest it. Because we could use the Neutromine. We also do really badly need the herbal medicine. However... Uh, we might not need two plots of it, so I'm going to let this one harvest and replant. After this one gets harvested, we might consider something different there, maybe more corn. I just don't think that we're going to need that much continuously, but uh, a double harvest of it initially right now would be great just to replenish our, our low stock. Because we do use it for crafting and stuff too, but we, we don't need you know, millions of it. Why won't that pan down? There we go. Uh, another pirate merchant. Can we get a different type of merchant, please? Um, 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 Gomez, I'm gonna wake you up. Go meet them down here, and we're gonna trade with them. If they don't have anything, that's totally fine, but I wanna trade with them immediately, and then basically just tell them to go home. Because otherwise they'll just linger around and be annoying. So we'll go talk with them very quickly. Um, no new dinosaurs, unfortunately, as I pan up here. So the only dinosaurs on the map currently are the ones that either belong to us or have been put in the enclosure by us. And the kibble seems to be working. You can see that the grass is, in fact, returning to this area. Though, we'll have to see if we're able to keep up on that. Because they definitely seem to prefer the kibble. That's why the grass and plant life is returning. Because they've only been eating the kibble. So, we're going to have to continually restock that. We also have kibble over here for whatever ends up in this enclosure. But of course, we have to find something to put in there first and not kill it, which has been a real issue thus far. And uh, before anybody mentions it again, I am aware of the mechanics of this game and how lethality works. Yes, for non-colonist pawns, there is a certain percentage chance that they'll effectively just die when they take too much damage. However, we had tested those weapons, and by those weapons I mean the bola and the stun gun, etc. Pretty extensively in this playthrough, and they were working as intended for a very long time. So it's not like we just were putting blind faith into these weapons. We had demonstrated in earlier episodes that they were effective 
for that purpose. However, they don't seem to be effective for that purpose anymore. So how we're going to handle that now, I'm not too sure. It seems like just shooting them with regular guns until they fall over and then patching them back up is the best way to do it, which is really unfortunate, but it is what it is. I'm going to buy out their regular medicine. I don't care for any of their drugs. And I don't remember what faction they were from, but we could maybe throw them a gift. I just I don't know what I would give them. More beer, maybe? Some gold? Nah. Um, I'll just buy their medicine for 100 silver. And let's pause before she runs home. Oh, right. We got a cargo pod full of meat. Where did they put that down? Oh, and I forgot to dismiss the trader. So dismiss. There's the medicine. That's your top priority. Then come down here, please, and grab that meat. And grab... Okay, fine. Do what you want. It's not going to let me queue up the lower ones, too. So we'll try to salvage as much of this as we can because it's free food. But what are you going to do? Looks like she grabbed it all. Anyways, cool. Uh, what are you doing now? Grabbing some rocks as well? Wow. That is multitasking. I'm impressed. Could never fault Gomez, though. She has been uh, probably one of the most reliable pawns in this playthrough so far. Uh, it looks like we haven't really made any progress up here on these floors. I, I guess that's fine as long as we're building other things, and I assume we have been. Mostly furniture from the looks of it. But yeah, these are basically fully furnished. We could move somebody in here. They would just be stuck living in the dark until we got the uh, conduits finished. And it looks like they actually did do some of the conduits. Just uh, they started from this end that's connected to nothing rather than from this end, which is where the power is being sourced from. <sighs> Even if they had just... Let's see. Like, yeah. So even if they had just connected it to here... Like, right there. That would have been sufficient, but... They started at this end, so there's not much we can do about it. Um, these are going to require more concrete as well. Okay. You know what? I put down wood floors there, but... Looking at it, I completely forgot I should be using these. Because this is what we've used in every other bathroom. So, I will ask that they do that. But at least there's a floor in there. Okay, I don't know what their deal is. I don't know that I really care. Just slept in the cold. Is it really cold in here? I guess it is a bit chilly. I didn't think we would need a heater at any point, but maybe we will. Um, That's not really a huge deal. Uh, I guess it would be under hygiene, because I would be using those. So what are our options? We have... Air conditioning, indoor units, walk-in freezers, uh, over here, we should have some sort of radiator. Maybe not, maybe we haven't researched that yet. Which is surprising, because we've researched quite a lot. Um, let's see. Whoops. Central heating. Okay. Uh, let's add that to... No, we've already done it. So maybe I'm just in the wrong place? I thought that was the right place. But we definitely have researched that. We should be able to throw down radiators. Oh, they're up here. My microphone was blocking them. I only saw these two rows. But they're up here. So as long as this is connected to our plumbing... We can throw these in a fairly central area, and because I have vents on all the rooms here, it should just kind of passively heat the whole place. Question is, where can I put this where it's not going to be intrusive? Uh, like, that's not too bad right there. I'm pretty sure that'll connect. I kind of like that just because it's not really in the way. Alternatively, I could just have them in, like, the hallways here. That's not too bad. Or even sort of stacked up like this. We could do several small ones. 
I don't know what would be more efficient. Or I could even do, yeah, like one, two, three, four. The issue with doing them here is I would need to add plumbing to those locations. For now, I guess let's do a temporary one. I'll take the large steel radiator and I will just kind of slide it in right there. And we'll see how efficient that is. If it's enough to heat the whole hotel, then we don't really need to bother doing anything else unless we are concerned with aesthetics. Um, we got water issues. What's going on here? Somebody going to... Rian's going to go ahead and empty it. At least they're doing it automatically again. It's nice. Okay, so that's open. And hopefully the toilets are working again. Those certainly are. And these are. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. Uh, also, they're finally getting our sterile tiles down here. So we'll have another... Uh, hospital ward up and running and I guess you guys are just hanging out eating in Schultz room boss has his helmet on by the way I don't know if you guys noticed that let's grab him real quick so there is uh, his loadout with weapon and there it is without again with the face covering because he had a face covering initially and so I just kind of kept his aesthetic though before he had a bandana. So this is obviously a little bit different, but it's just more military looking, less bandit looking. Um, I think otherwise it's the same thing that Riker's wearing. It just doesn't, he, Riker doesn't have the face covering or the balaclava. So I thought I'd check in on our artist here and see if any of these have been finished. No, we're still at 18. So they have not produced another one yet, though it looks like there is one in progress. But as soon as those are done, we'll go ahead and, you know, start allocating them once more. We still need three in this building and quite a few in this one. Um, we're going to end up with, it looks like, ten bedrooms in here. So obviously we'll need ten potted plants in there, the nice fancy ornate ones. And then in this building, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five... Um, what, nine? Is that right? Nine bedrooms? Plus, uh, Riker's security office thing here. Uh, I shouldn't say security, because he is going to be in charge of the, sort of the away team, or the strike team, whatever we call it. And I still haven't decided who's going to be in charge of actual um, base security. It's going to be, you know, like Marin or somebody who's in our security officer uniform. I haven't decided if Gomez is part of that yet. So she might be part of the away team. She might be part of the security team. I might leave her as sort of like an in-between. Um, but we'll see. Right now I'm leaning toward Marin just because she's already got the distinct cap and whatnot. So it's just easier that way I guess. Easier for me anyways. It looks like we have made pretty good progress over here. All of these rooms are, well, at least all the rooms that are finished are furnished. This one has been started, though. We don't seem to be making as good a progress on the walls lately. Have we been producing any concrete whatsoever? I wish there was... I don't know. I was going to say sort of like, like StarCraft II hotkeys where you can jump back to a specific building. Uh, we are producing it. Because it got used up last time I checked, so this has been made since then, apparently three batches worth. And nobody is using it at the moment. Or if they are, it's in their hands and hasn't been delivered yet. Or maybe just delivered to a different stockpile. Anyway, um, all these are waiting for is a bit of concrete and they can be done. We are finally getting... Uh, I'm assuming conduits, but I don't know for sure. I guess we can find out. Let's see. Plumbing is done, so they definitely did the plumbing. And power conduits are coming along as well. You guys are killing me right now. Edward. Okay, great, great, great. Now, finish whatever that is. Do this, and do this. 
because if we connect those, then we have power. If we keep doing random spots, then we don't. So the plumbing has been routed to there now. Um, and then if we grab this, that spot there needs to be finished, and then we have power. So what are you up to now? Now build this power conduit first. <clears throat> With that done, these bedrooms will all have light. And then we can move people into them. We'll have to decide who goes in here. Again, this is the administration building, so people uh, involved with probably construction are going to be the top priority in here. Construction, um, you know, base cleanliness, things like that. Not people who are necessarily fighters. So let's do a quick survey of who's living in the hotel and see who we think should move in there. Now, Petra is our cook. I don't mind her living in the hotel because she should be as close to this as possible. So she might be someone that stays there. Riker and Tails are going to be, again, in this bedroom, I think, with a little office in front. And let's see, Whale, what was your whole deal? I need to get her a new name still. Whale is a builder and a farmer and a crafter. So she is doing a lot of things. Um, she is somebody that might be worth putting in here. However, I think the people in there are a little bit more, or at least a little bit better suited to that job already. Uh, Rianne, not really doing any crafting. What has she been doing? I think she's mostly cutting stone bricks. And then finally, Karen. Yeah, so I guess Whale can live in here. I don't see any reason why she doesn't really fit the bill. So let's give her this bedroom. And is she asleep? No. What is she doing? Building a conduit. Why don't you come in here and clean your room? Because it's kind of filthy. And that'll be hers. And if we drop back down to the hotel... We're going to make that a guest bed. We're going to ask for 10 silver per night. Um, and then we have Tetsuo, who is security. He could also go in there. Um, we put Lao in the prison, so I guess Tetsuo makes sense. You know what? Let's make Whale live here. We're going to put Tetsuo closer to the door because he's the fighter. It's also closer to the prison. I think it makes the most sense. So that said, Whale, come over here and clean this room instead because this is yours. And then Tetsuo, when you're done with that, come clean your bedroom. Still have one more ready. Uh, but before we bother with that, let's mark this as a guest room. Ask for 10 silver. So there's Tone, there's Marin, Wayne and Lester, and then of course Bruce and Boss, but they are security, or sorry, they're part of the away team as is Lester. Wayne is a builder, so I think Wayne definitely is somebody that can go in here. Let's go ahead and just throw him on this one. So Wayne, there you are, that's your new room. What are you doing right now? Having a bath. When you're done with your bath, come clean your room. That might be all the dirt, okay. And that frees up this bed, which again becomes a guest bed for 10 silver a night. All right, so we're finally getting people out of here. And as soon as this barracks building is done, or at least parts of it are done, we'll be able to move a lot more people out. Okay. Yeah, I almost regret not putting Riker and Tails in here. I just don't think it makes sense given what their tasks commonly are. But I kind of consider them both to be park administrators from like a roleplay perspective. Oh cool, we can duplicate genes now. Uh, so, I know we don't have any formally appointed leaders because the leadership mod doesn't work for me. Let me actually show you guys this because it's been frustrating me. So if I go into the dev tools, we should actually be able to mess with this stuff here. If I reset leadership type, I have the option of democracy or okay. I can't appoint leaders, which is very frustrating. And it's never worked for me. 
being able to do um, like a, a dictatorship or military style uh, leadership where you know you have somebody that is uh, not voted in but appointed essentially in this case by me I don't really trust them to vote in this case and I don't feel like a park would be or a, a place like this wouldn't be administered as a democracy it would be you know administered as a corporation probably with different divisions and those division leaders would be assigned based on merit but they would be chosen by a superior not by you know the populace at large so i i can't choose all, all i can do is democracy um, if i want to just manually add leaders i have none or okay so i can't do that and obviously there's no leaders to purge so that wouldn't do anything so I don't know what to do. Um, we might just have to continue to roleplay it and ignore that aspect, although it it's a bit disappointing because that leadership mod actually does more than just uh, you know arbitrarily assign titles, they actually do confer benefits. And I would like, for example, to make someone like Dr. Ayala so, sort of like the park overseer since she's a geneticist and scientist, somebody like Riker to be um, the head of our strike team because he's a former soldier and the only former soldier in our group that has been with us since the beginning and is part of that team. Virgil of course is a similar situation but he's somebody that never really leaves the park and actually he would be a good candidate for the security team too but I like the way he looks and I don't want to put him in the uniform so I don't know we'll see. Anyway um so I'd like to give them, you know, administrative roles. Tails as well, I kind of see her as sort of like the park ranger almost. So she's the one kind of in charge of the animals uh, direct care sort of out here. Whereas, you know, someone like Ayala or Woody would be in charge of sort of the biological aspects of the animals. And then I'm trying to think of what else? Obviously somebody in charge of the park security team like these guys. Uh, where did you get that helmet? I mean, I know we crafted that, I just didn't realize he picked it up. But anyways, you get what I mean. So I'd like to be able to do that, but unfortunately I can't do it through the leadership mod. I can't assign any leaders through the leadership mod. So we'll have to figure out a different solution. I am running a mod in our RimWorld Rome playthrough that lets me put little rank insignias on characters. They don't actually do anything other than put a little uh, rank marker on their portrait up here. So it, it's more for us than it is for the actual game. But that's one solution, so at least we can remember who's in charge of what. But I'd prefer to do it not just strictly through roleplay, so using the leadership to at least some degree. Something's happening right now. Oh boy. We are under siege. There's a lot of people down there. You know what? I think we'll try to blow them up. How are we on time though? Let me check because we might not have time to do this raid today. Yeah, I think we actually won't. So I'm at about 45... Uh, well, like 48 minutes right now before cuts. I'd like to try to keep this under 40. So I think we'll cut here on a little bit of a cliffhanger. I do apologize for that. And we'll come back next time and deal with this raid. And depending on the aftermath of said raid, maybe we'll try to put together a team to go deal with this. Otherwise, we might need to give it a bit more time. Um, you know what? Let's actually jump out to the world map and we'll at least take a look. So here it is before we call it a day. We have 16 days, so it's only been about 24 hours since we got notified of this, so there's still plenty of time. And it's not far at all. In fact, it's closer than a lot of the stuff we've been doing, so it's less than half a day. And that's not even factoring in the animals and their effect on travel time. So that's definitely worth doing. Even the ones with terrible rewards I find worth doing just for the sake of kind of spicing up the gameplay a little bit. Anyways, uh, leave it there for now, and we'll come back and deal with that raid next time. So thank you so much for watching. I had a great time playing some RimWorld with you, and I look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next episode.